Hi, my name is Dennis Siri. I am executive director and founder of the New York City Independent Film Festival, Independent in Spirit, International at Heart. And this is the New York City Independent Film Festival Meet the Filmmakers podcast. Join us while we meet this year's filmmakers. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi, we're here in this episode with Fasi. Fasi, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Fasi. Uh, I'm a director and I primarily work at the moment in animation. But before this, I uh, worked in music videos uh, as cat, as a crew member um, and as a DP. And uh, I started out initially as a PA and then worked my way into uh, the cinematography circle uh, for music videos. And I realized I really like making things look pretty and I like uh, I like being creative and telling stories. So I moved on up to being a director and started making my own shorts. Cool. What made you want to be a filmmaker? How did that happen? What, what, how did that thought process happen? Um, so as a kid, uh, my dad watched a lot of movies. And whenever he would put on a movie, he would say, you can't watch this. So he would send me into another room to play video games or something. But you know, when your parents say, don't do it or don't watch this, don't do it, it makes you want to do it even more. So then, you know, uh, one day I stole my dad's DVD of The Hangover and I was like, wow, this is a great movie. <laughs> and I was like, and then I started watching more and more from there just out of sheer curiosity, just going on HBO. Um, uh, trying to watch movies by any means necessary, uh, going over to friend's house. Uh, and um, eventually I realized, wow, I love watching movies and I like uh, telling stories. And I really figured out I liked storytelling because, you know, my friends wouldn't watch as many movies as I did. And then I'd go to school the next day and I would retell the story of the movie and they'd be interested just listening to me tell the story again. And I'd be like, huh, I really like telling these stories. I wish I could make one and then tell someone the story about a movie I made or something. And eventually from there, this was all like in like, you know, second, third grade or something. Eventually I figured out, okay, yeah, I kind of want to, I want to do this. All right. So in some ways you answered that already, but how long have you been a filmmaker? How long would you employ yourself being a filmmaker? Um, so we started during COVID. I started with some friends during COVID. Um, everybody was doing, you know, school remotely. We had so much time. Uh, and I was like, Hey, you guys want to go do something since like, you know, we're home all the time. And they're like, yeah. And then one of my friends wrote a script. So he was a background actor and he wrote a script and I was like, Oh, wow, this seems fun. We can, we can probably film this. It seems feasible enough, you know, one or one or two locations, like, you know, uh, we can probably make this for nothing and, you know, figure out how it works. So we treated our first short film as like an experiment. Where we were like, you know, I was trying to figure out how to get the camera working, how to get the sound system working. They were trying to figure out how to do all the blocking and everything. And then we were on set rewriting the script when we we're like, ah, this doesn't feel cool enough. Um, so we started in 2020 COVID just experimenting and figuring out how all this happened and how to do all this stuff. And uh, uh, from then on out, I was like, wow, it, it got a pretty good response at like some local film festivals in Newark. And then we we're like, you know, let's do more. Let's keep doing this. And then from there on here we are so. oh cool okay so when you went and told your parents hi i'm going to be a filmmaker how did that go down they say only after you finish college and you have a degree in engineering or you know they still they don't engineering. they still don't believe it they still don't believe that i'm doing that you know that that's my end life goal um right now i do have a primary job so i do do software development primarily um and uh when I'm not doing that on the weekends is when I'm like getting together with all the local creatives and everything. And I'm like, yeah, let's, let's build ourselves towards, you know, being full-time creatives and doing this. And in their mind, you know, they're like, oh, this is never going to happen. And I'm like, I, it's happening. It's happening. So, you know, that's, uh, uh, I, I guess they'll believe it when they see something, you know, on, on a big screen or with a crowd or if they get like an audience reaction or something, then they'll believe it. Like, okay, he might be serious. Okay. Well, good luck. Yeah, thank you. All right, so it sounds like you do have next. My next question is: Do you have a village of filmmakers? You're, you're, you're... Yeah, yeah, a lot, actually. So I do have a pretty good collective of artists that I work with uh, consistently, and that I use to find new artists. Um, I know tons of people in the music video industry, 
um, since that's where I started out. And uh, I know tons of creatives who are also submitting constantly to festivals who are always creating. And uh, we always tend to help each other out if you don't know something, if you're confused on like a creative aspect of it or help, or even like a financial aspect of it. You know, they'll be like, okay, so here's what you got to do next. Here's who you got to talk to. Here's an actor you can find. Oh, I know somebody this way. So I think I have a pretty big and pretty extensive network of filmmakers uh, that I can always call upon to help me with any project. That's great. Mm -hmm. So what made you want to make this movie? So I've been tinkering with some animation tools like uh, Blender and Unreal Engine, uh, just trying to get into CGI and uh, uh, 3D animation type of work. And I started off making a uh, pretty much a, kind of like a fan animation or a fan video of a popular video game franchise that uh, I was a fan of as a kid. And I guess the fan animation, you know, gained some traction because the studio who made the game noticed it. And they reached out to me. And they're like, wow, we love your animation. And um, uh, tons of fans of the series discovered it. And they all started messaging me that we love. It. And I'm like, you know, I think my next work should probably be an animation. Because, uh, you know, I love the flexibility of the 3D tools. And uh, I loved uh, just how limitless, like, the um, uh, how limitless your creativity can be in the 3D CGI space. Because there's no, you know, restric uh, restrictions on, like, budget. Um, and uh, you can create any type of set that comes to your imagination, any type of characters that come to your imagination. And uh, that's something that you can't always do, you know, practically. Uh, especially when, you know, you don't always have much of a budget. And so that's why I chose animation as the medium. And then story-wise, you know, I thought it would be perfect to tell a story about artificial intelligence because it's like, you know, AI is the new hot word that everybody's throwing around. How can we incorporate AI into this? How do we put AI into our film so we don't have to pay artists or something? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, I was like, you know, let's uh, let's make a short, a short story about AI and how that um, would look in a uh, possible dystopian type future. And so we made a little a little animated short about that, so. Yeah. Cool. So what was the hardest part and what was the most fun part of making the movie? The hardest part was directing my actors uh, on how to voice act. Because so often there's a pretty big difference between, you know, physical acting in front of the camera and then voice acting. Um, and these are all people that I've worked with previously as actors. And then now I'm having them voice act. And I'm like, I want you to do exactly what you do with in, in front of the camera, mm -hmm. but we're not going to see what you're doing. So you really have to put that action into your voice instead. Um, so that was a unique experience because this, I think this was also a first time for them uh, voice acting. So I was really like, you know, I get that and sometimes when you're delivering a line, you know, vocally, it might be a little, you know, uh, a little normal. And then people will get your intention um, based on the physical acting you do out of it. They'll be like, oh, he's angry or he's, you know, happy or something. I'm like, no one's going to see any physical indication of how you how you feel. I need you to put it in your voice. If it sounds exaggerated, you're probably doing it right, because then we'll know what you're sounding like. So uh, that was probably the most um uh, difficult part. Uh, the most fun part um, uh, was doing all the crazy things inside the uh, 3D environment on the computer. It was like, you know, even if it didn't make the final cut, it's like, hmm, how about we blow something up? Like, you know, just for fun. It's like just figuring all the effects out and uh, figuring out, oh, yeah, we can do this or we can do that. Oh, let's try this. Let's try to turn the walls from wood into metal. Let's turn the walls from metal into cloth. Let's see how this looks. And just all the, you know, Unlimited creativity. It was definitely the fun part. Of it. Okay, great. So, are you the type of filmmaker that you're happy with what you do? You say, okay, that baby's gone. I, I've sent it out into the world, and any mistakes I see, I'm just going to worry about for my next project. Or are you the type of filmmaker that sits there, looks at something, and goes, someday I'm going to get the money and I'm going to fix that. Which yeah. type of filmmaker are you? Um, I think it depends on the story. It, has, it depends on uh, the story I want to tell. If it's like, if I'm not super into the story, I'm probably not going to want to revisit it. If I am super into the story, I'm like, yeah, you know, let's do this again. So the short film that I submitted for this one is actually a pretty good example of that, where I made it once and I uh, was showing around to people be like, hey, look, it's animation, yada, yada, whatever. And I got a pretty decent response out of it. And then I enjoyed the story myself. 
And I was like, you know, I think I can do better with this. So I went back and I reanimated the entire thing. Um, because at this point, now I knew, okay, now I know how the software works. Now I'm I'm probably going to be able to do my lighting better. I'm going to get be able to get better reflections, better blocking out of the character. Um, so I did go back and redo this one. And the finalized version is what you're going to be viewing at the festival. Um, but it, it really does depend on the story. And it's really hard for me, like once I'm done in the editing room and it's sent out, it's really hard for me to watch it with people. Like sometimes it's like, close my eyes I'm like just I'm just gonna listen for the audio cues from the audience you're like do they like it do they not like it you know are they laughing when they're supposed to are they quiet when they're supposed to be quiet are they paying attention and uh yeah so that's that's generally what I do okay all right that's cool yeah. all right so in the in the film world we all know we're not gonna make we're not gonna buy mansions and cars right money we make in the indie film world so what does success look like what is what is look what is it look and sound like? What is success? Um, success to me would sound like it, it would be trying to get as many people to view it as possible, and I just want to make sure that they're reacting, they're reacting in any which way. Like I'm, I'm happy if they react, if they hate it, if they're super happy with it, if they're angry at it. Um, but the worst reaction I can get is if they have nothing to say about it, and if they're like. Super Extremely quiet and it's just like oh, that was that was good like ah uh, then it's probably not what I should have made um but that's my uh that's my expectation I would expect a uh, I'm expecting always a reaction and that's my success if I get a reaction out of it um and I I noticed that first with my first short film where you know the big climax happened and people like you know, people audibly gasped and I was like, oh, wow, like, I kind of like this feeling. I think I want more of this feeling. You know, I like it when people, you know, uh, get something out of it. Uh, and if they're entertained, are you not entertained? Right. That's the that's the saying as it goes. So, yeah. OK, so let's say somebody comes along. Uncle Fat. I'm sorry, repeat your name again. Let's see. I see. OK. Uncle Fassi, I'm going to be a filmmaker just like you. Mm -hmm. to say what would be your conversation how would your conversation be um tell a fun story uh make sure you're doing your work um with the story you're telling um and uh, trust the audience really really trust the audience because they know uh when you don't when your heart's not in it um and always try to entertain uh, is my thing even if they you know they don't know they're being entertained as long as they're getting a reaction there's some sort of entertainment happening there so keep an eye out for that and be sure to tell a great story great that's it for my questions thank you for joining us yeah let thank you just, so much let me just say that the film is called sins of adam and it's going to be shown at the new york city independent film festival on june 5th uh that's wednesday at the producers club in new york so come join us and thank you for being with us. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for interviewing me, Dennis. I really appreciate it.